Hello, uh, welcome back. So we, in the previous session, we started studying about TCP IP protocol suite and it comprises of five layers. Okay, so what are the different layers that also we had seen? The first layer being the physical layer, second is the data link layer, third layer network layer, fourth layer transport layer and fifth is the application layer. So by now you have understood what is protocol layering and what is the importance of protocol layering. That is when uh, there are different layers performing different tasks, then the communication becomes effective. So we should know what is this particular laying, layer doing or what are the features of that particular layer? How exactly it is helping in the effective communication? So to understand that we should know what is this each layer doing? So let us start studying about the description about each layer. So let's start studying about what is the physical layer doing. So all of you know that by enough communication isn't as simple as we think. That is it is not just sending a message from source to destination. Instead we studied that there are different ways to communicate. That is we can have have uh, you know full duplex communication, you can have simplex communication, you can have half duplex communication, same way we have different types of networks, say LAN, MAN or WAN and we also have different types of topologies, mesh, ring, star, bus or hybrid topology. So likewise, we have so many features now into consideration. So before that, uh, we have different layers, the five layers we have and each layer has its own uh, features or it has its own task to perform in the first layer that is a physical layer what is happening in physical layer or why is it what is it doing is it is responsible for the movement of individual bits from one node to another node so before this now if I tell you physical layer is uh, you know responsible for movement of individual bits now question will arise for you that how come in bits here okay so to understand that I will give you a simple you know introduction of how this layers uh, you know how this data will be flowing from each layer so in the application layer say you are going to send a mail or you are going to fetch a data or you are going to browse a particular you know you know uh, you know um, some google uh, 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 history or you want to get some data so likewise there are many applications right so you need to fetch that so in that case what happens the message or the data is in, in its raw form but as it goes to the next layer coming to you know physical layer what happens is there is a conversion so what is this conversion will be st uh, studying it soon so but when it reaches the physical layer it will be in the form of bits or bit streams okay so this uh, bit streams after the physical layer then what is there that is the underneath or hidden layer is the transmission medium so from the physical layer the bits needs to move to the transmission medium okay so uh, it is in the form of bits now and it has to reach the another node another node in the sense destination node so physical layer what it will be doing it is responsible for movements of individual bits from one node to another node okay the transmission medium is another hidden layer under the physical layer so when we tell transmission medium you have two different ways of transmission medium what is that wired or wireless or we can say cable or air or guided or unguided so these transmission medium do not carry bits everyone know that so it will be uh, carrying either electrical signal or optical signal so the base these bits will be converted to the form whichever the transmission medium has to you know al does allow it okay so the physical layer mainly it receives bit from the data link layer right so about the physical layer what is that uh, data link layer so we can say the physical layer is the last layer in the sender side and the first layer in the receiver side okay so it receives bits from the data link layer and sends it through the transmission medium which is the second layer second layer is the data link layer what is data link layer responsible for it is responsible for moving frames from one node to another node over a link. So here you should understand the terminologies. When I tell data link layer, instead of you know data, we are telling here frames. Okay, so here this uh, conversion has happened to frames here. So what are these frames? Frames is nothing but it is like a packet here. Okay, so one frame will have a, its own header, its own trailer that will form one frame. Okay, this frame has to move from one node to another 
afternoon so this is also told as hop to hop delivery so what is this hop to hop de delivery to understand that that is also called as note to note delivery to understand that you all know that whenever we are going to do a communication then obviously that network has some or other ways of you know uh, that flow okay so if i tell uh you know uh, communication a has to communicate with the host b then it will follow a certain path in that certain path there might be routers okay there might be switches or there might be bridges so to understand all that this data link layer what it will do it will you know check what is the next hop or next node i have to transmit so to understand that i'll give an example so when you are going to travel say from you know uh, mangalore to bangalore okay so there are uh, the source is mangalore and the destination is bangalore but uh, if i say from source uh, you know mangalore to bangalore so if you go by road then you know that there are different you know stations or you can we can say uh, different hops that is nodes okay so here from mangalore if i take which route okay so if i am going through the madikeri route or uh, which route i am taking depending on that i have different different uh, you know stops okay so from here um you know mangalore i am going to madikeri so puttur so madikeri so like that if i am going in that way then the first will be puttur okay so understand that from mangalore i have to go to puttur then that will be the first hop from puttur to madikeri second hop so this this is called hop to hop delivery okay so which router for 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 the you know efficient transmission of data which route i can make use of which is very effective what is the capacity of that can i you know send this data in that all this will be included in the data link layer so data link layer is responsible for moving frame from one node to another node over a link okay so understand the difference between source to destination hop to hop delivery okay so now we, uh, we have the links right so links uh, that is a network so what what is a uh, you know it can be it can be lan wan or wireless lan or wan so depending on that we will be sending the data so what is the data link layer above that data link layer is a network layer so in the network layer the datagram is found and that will be received by this data link layer and the data link layer what it will do it will encapsulate the datagram in a packet called a frame okay and this it sends the frame to the physical layer okay this frame is sent to the physical layer that is about data link layer okay so now in tcp ip uh, model does not define any specific protocol for this uh, data link layer suppose all standard and proprietary protocols each protocol may provide a different service some protocols provide complete error and uh, error detection and correction some protocols provide only error correction so you should understand that here there is a uh, flow control also but there is no specific pro pro protocol for that we have uh, different examples for that like Um, stop and wait protocol all that will be learning go back and selective repeat protocols and uh, uh, it also does error control that is error detection and correction okay so some protocols provides only error correction so different types of error con uh, control methods are there like crc checksum so about this we'll be studying in the later sessions okay next is the network layer so what is network la layer responsible for it is responsible for source to destination okay so what is your source uh, and what is the destination if communication from a to b has to happen so source is a and the destination host is a b so this network layer is responsible from where i have to receive the data and to where i have to send this is network layer responsible and network layer is also responsible for routing the packet routing the packet means what which route i have to take which particular router if i take it becomes easy okay so this is uh, the main purpose of network layer now why we need the separate network layer obviously in some of the ways in routers if we say there is only three layers what are the three layers physical layer um you know then the data link layer and the network layer there is no application and protocol layer so obviously we need network layer because the main purpose the source and destination purpose is done by the transport layer right so if transport layer is not there obviously i need network layer so the network layer has uh, its own main purpose it will check for uh, you know from the source to destination transmission of data is happening and in the best possible ways so what are the different types of protocols we are using in uh, um network layer that is it is is ip internet working protocol address resolution protocol icnc internet control message protocol igmp internet group message protocol so all these protocols 
will be learning so first one ip is the main protocol of the network layer it defines the formats and structure of the address so in the ip uh, there will be a format so what is the format of the ip is it will have a address address of where uh, it has to send okay it, it is responsible for routing a packet from its source to its destination. It is a con connectionless and unreliable protocol. Okay, connectionless means there is no connection setup between the sender and the receiver. Unreliable protocol means IP does not make any guarantee about delivery of the data. So packets may be getting dropped during the transmission. It provides a best effort delivery service. Best effort means IP does not does its best to get the packet to its destination with the guarantees. IP does not provide the following service that is flow control, error control or congestion control services. If an application requires above services, the application should rely only on the transport layer protocol. So a congestion control service means what? If there is traffic, then how it is going to accommodate or how it is going to, you know, do the effective communication. Okay, those these all features are not present in IP. So that will be you know to all to get all the services it should rely on the transport layer the second is the arp that is address resolution protocol arp is used to find the physical address of the node when its internet address is known physical address is the 48 bit address that is imprinted on the nic or lan card internet address ip address is used uniquely and universally identify a device in the internet icmp what is it doing it is used to inform the sender about datagram problems that occur during the transit igmp is used to send the same message to a group of recipients so these two protocols are used you know send whenever we are sending the data so if there is some problem that is going to uh, you know I icmp or igmp will you uh, you know give the acknowledgement saying that this uh, transmission has some problems okay so these are the different protocols that's there in the uh, you know uh, network layer so fourth is a transport layer so transport layer are responsible for delivery of a message from a process to another process or so the transport layer what it gets it gets the message from the application layer encapsulates the message in a packet called a segment and sends the segment to the network layer okay tcp or ip model defines three protocols tcp transmission control protocol user datagram protocol stream control transmission protocol so tcp is a reliable connection oriented protocol a connection is established between the sender and the receiver before the data can be received tcp provides flow control error control and congestion control okay this, uh, this transport layer the main purpose is like delivery of message to the exact source and destination so it will get the message from the application layer and it will encapsulate the message the terminal it uses your segment okay this segment is sent to the network layer okay so there are different three protocols uh, UDP is the simplest of the three transport protocol. It is unreliable connectionless pro uh, protocol. It does not provide flow error or congestion control. Each datagram is transported separately and independently. It is suitable for application program that needs to send short message and it cannot afford retransmission. SCTP provides uh, su support for newer applications such as voice over internet. It uh, combines the best features of UDP and TCP. Next is the fifth one is the application layer. In the application layer, what happens? It exchanges messages between each other. Communication at the application layer is between two process. That is two program running at this layer. To communicate a process sends a request to another process and receives a response. Process to process communication is the duty of application layer. Okay. Here also we have different types of protocol, SMTP, uh, Telnet, FTP, DNS, SNMP. Okay, so what is uh, it? SMTP is used to transport email between a source and destination. Telnet is used to uh, access the site remo uh, remotely. FTP is used for trans uh, transferring files from one host to another. DNS is used to find the IP address of a computer. SNMP is used to manage the internet at global and local levels. Okay. So these are the different types of protocol, you know, layers, all the file layers. So all of you know that when we are using mobile, there are different types of applications, right? So which application I am making use of or which I am, so using that the transport layer, no? So transport layer, it will be checking, uh, you know, which particular 
that is how how the port to port delivery is happening so which application is running and where i have to send the data so same way application it is a you know process to process delivery so exchange of information so different layers so we, as of now we've seen all the different layers next we'll be studying about encapsulation and decapsulations thank you for listening